I'm Newt Gingrich, and I want to report to you that if we unleash the American people, we can be at the beginning of an extraordinary era where we rebuild the America that we love. Now, when I say unleash the American people, I mean literally get the government to stop crippling our efforts to create a better future. This is a big topic. It's one I'm going to come back to again and again in the next few weeks. But I want to start with a part of it that relates to national security, relates to your personal family budget, relates to the economy, and relates to balancing the federal budget. All four in one topic. And it comes down to a simple idea. What if we had a program that enabled the American people to develop so much new energy that we were in fact no longer reliant on Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. We didn't care what the Iranians did in the states of Hormuz because we were safe in national security terms. What if that new energy program created well over a million new jobs, high paying jobs, jobs that put Americans back to work and kept the money here at home that we've been sending overseas, giving us a dramatic improvement in our balance of payments, strengthening the dollar and giving us a chance to live much freer and more independently. What if that very idea also meant that we'd have dramatic increases in revenue to the federal government without a tax increase, but that in fact the federal government would have literally an entire new stream of money? And finally, what if that big new idea meant that you personally were better off because you were buying gasoline for $2.50 a gallon, not for $3.89 or $4 or what some people project by this summer could be $5 or more? How is that possible, you ask? Well, that's what's exciting, and it's one of the reasons I'm running for president. I know that science, technology, entrepreneurship have made tremendous progress. And I know that the politicians in Washington, the old-time establishment, the elite news media, the bureaucrats, don't have a clue what's possible, or in some cases they have a clue and they're opposed to it. And I'm going to cover both of those in the next few minutes. But let's start with a historic fact that I think is going to change our understanding of America's future and our understanding of the energy possibilities. That fact is called North Dakota. In North Dakota, there's a formation called the Bakken Formation. It has a tremendous amount of oil. It has much more oil than the U.S. Geological Survey used to think. In fact, based on one U.S. Geological Survey study, there's now 25 times as much oil as there was back when they first estimated it. Not 25% more, 2,500% more. Now, the reason we know this is, I think, very illustrative of what's wrong with America today. We know the Bakken Formation exists in North Dakota because it's on private land, and liberals weren't able to block us from developing it. So the people, the entrepreneurs, the business leaders, who went in there and developed that formation, they began to produce more and more oil. As one of them said, they now find that almost everywhere they look, there's more oil. What's the result? Well, the official unemployment rate in North Dakota is 3.5%. But that may actually be misleading, because most of that 3.5% don't have the right training. It turns out that North Dakota is booming to such an extent that there are 16 to 18,000 new jobs, good jobs, $60,000 to $80,000 a year jobs that aren't filled because the folks who need a job aren't trained and the folks, the jobs they need don't have people filling them. Think about that. What would it be like in your hometown if the boom was so big that there were 16 to 18,000 unfilled jobs? How much better off would we be? And guess what? When you have that kind of economic growth, you have an increase in revenue to the government. So the state government of North Dakota has had seven consecutive tax cuts, and it now has a rainy day fund of several billion dollars, even though the entire state budget is only about two billion dollars. So energy can lead to a bigger economy, more revenue for the government, better jobs for people. Now let's step all the way back and look at the other 49 states and look at the ocean around the United States. If North Dakota has that much energy, how much do we think we have everywhere else? Turns out we may have more oil in the United States today, given new science and new technology, than we have actually pumped worldwide since 1870. We may, in fact, by one estimate, have three times as much oil in the United States as there is in Saudi Arabia. 
Remember, right now I'm just talking about oil, which relates directly to gasoline. But there's been a parallel revolution in natural gas. In natural gas, we knew that technically there was a lot of gas in, in shale, but we didn't know how to get it out. And, then, and people thought, given the amount that could be recovered, as recently as the year 2000, they thought that natural gas was a declining commodity. Uh, it was a perfect example of what's been called peak production. We've already used up over half of it. In fact, as recently as about 2000, people thought there was about seven years supply left. They were literally talking about getting liquefied natural gas out of the Middle East, putting it in giant refrigerated ships, bringing it to the U.S., unloading it here, because the chemical industry in particular needed the gas. All of a sudden, somebody had a really bright idea. They took a technology which had been developed for ocean drilling, because ocean platforms are really expensive. And so when you drill one rig on the ocean platform, you want it to go as many places as you can. So they've developed really brilliant techniques for going out horizontal. They come down with one, and then it goes out in every direction. And all of a sudden, somebody figured out, gee, if you could do that with natural gas, and at the same time, if you could fracture the rock in a way by using steam and water that you could actually get the gas to come into one's collection point, you could get a lot of gas out of the shale. The net result was that we now have in shale tremendous amounts of natural gas that's recoverable. In fact, the most recent estimate is that we may have over a hundred years supply of natural gas. Think about that. In one short decade, we went from seven years supply to over a hundred years supply because science and technology had improved so much. Furthermore, instead of us importing liquefied natural gas from the Middle East, there's now serious talk that we're going to build facilities in Houston and we're going to ship liquefied natural gas to China. So we'll be making money exporting natural gas where people thought we'd be giving up money 10 years ago importing natural gas. Now what does this mean? It means in places like the Marcellus Shale in western Pennsylvania, in the areas of eastern Ohio, coming down all along the Appalachians, all the way out to Dallas, Texas, there is formation after formation after formation. And the result is not just money for big oil, but people who own the property, farmers. I had talked several years ago with Governor Jindal of Louisiana, who had just run into a farmer who suddenly discovered that he had natural gas on his farm, and he'd been given an amazingly big check by the natural gas company. And so he was very happy to find out that he had a better income, he was going to get royalties, and therefore the local economy around Shreveport was really beginning to grow. Now I give you that background because these new sciences, these new technologies, and the entrepreneurs who use them are giving us dramatic new opportunities. This really matters for some very practical reasons. First of all, since the mid-1970s, we've known that the Arab states uh, and, and Iran combined uh, have dominated oil production and have used their leverage to raise the cost of oil and to bring political pressure to bear on the Americans and on the Europeans. Now, I want to get to a point where we produce so much oil in the United States that no American president will ever again bow to a Saudi king. I thought, frankly, uh, it's time that we tell the Saudis the truth. We know that they are the largest funders of schools called madrasas, which teach hate. We know that they spend several billion dollars a year exporting a very, very extreme version called Wahhabism. And we know that they are not straight with us. And up to now, our presidents have been too cautious to say, oh, gee, I don't want to offend the Saudis. I don't want them to do something with their oil supply. Well, we have an opportunity now to turn that around. We have an opportunity to build up the American oil supply, the American natural gas supply, so we can then tell the Saudis the truth, so we can deal with them from a position of strength, so we can no longer worry about the Persian Gulf. And at that point, if in fact the Iranians want to do something in the Straits of Hormuz, maybe the Chinese have a problem, or the Indians have a problem, or the Europeans have a problem. But I'm not sure at that point that the Americans are going to have a problem if we become, once again, what we were in World War II the leading producer of oil in the world. And in fact, there's at least one study already out that says by 2017, if we do the right things, we will produce more oil than either Russia or Saudi Arabia, and we will regain by the end of the decade 
being the leading producer of oil in the world. What I want to do is accelerate that for a couple reasons. First of all, to get this economy back on track. If you had $500 billion a year that was not going overseas, that was paying royalties in the U.S., paying land owners, paying people to go out and develop the oil, paying pipeline builders, you would suddenly have a really booming economy right here at home. We have an opportunity to really help our economy. There's a second part. Every time gas prices go up, they're the equivalent of a tax on working Americans and retired Americans. Think about it. You go to the gas station. If you're paying $4 a gallon, you have a lot less money left each week than if you're paying $2.50 a gallon. Now, $2.50 may sound like it's uh, an impossible number. That's baloney. When I was Speaker of the House, we paid $1.13 on average during the four years I was Speaker. When Barack Obama became President, we paid $1.89 that week. But the Obama administration is so anti-oil, so anti-gas, so anti-fossil fuels in general, including coal, that basically their view is if we have lots of it, they don't want it. They're prepared to do almost anything to stop the development of these kind of programs. You may think I'm exaggerating, but let me give you an example. In North Dakota, where the developments are on private land, so the liberals haven't been able to stop them, the Obama U.S. Attorney for North Dakota filed a lawsuit because eight migratory birds had been found dead uh, near oil fields. Now, I want you to think about this. Thousands of migratory birds are killed every year by wind turbines. But wind turbines are one of President Obama's favorite alternative fuels, so they're green. Therefore, although they kill birds, they're green, so they're good, even though what they're doing may not be good. And I happen to think wind is a legitimate source of energy. And I've noticed often that, for example, Iowa produces 20% of its electricity from wind, the large, second largest producer in the world after, after Denmark. So I'm not anti-wind, but I think it's fascinating. The selective prosecution of oil companies over eight birds because the ideological radicals in the Obama administration so deeply dislike using oil. You have the same challenge. Uh, with the way in which we now fracture rock called fracking. Uh, and the Obama administration has literally assembled multiple agencies to hold workshops and trying to figure out how to stop it. It's almost as though anything which succeeds, anything which enables Americans to have a better life with more income, with less expensive energy, is somehow bad. To show you how far this is going, even though we have today the highest price average cost of gasoline in history. That's right. President Obama has taken us from $1.89 to the most expensive gasoline on average we've ever had. They're still not satisfied. The Environmental Protection Agency under President Obama has a proposal for a brand new regulation that would on average raise the cost of gasoline another 25 cents. And that's still not enough. The Secretary of Energy, Secretary Chu, who in many ways ought to be called the, anti the Secretary of Anti-Energy, uh, said before he was named Secretary, he really wanted American gasoline prices to reach the European level. That'd be $9 a gallon. Now, you have to be somebody who doesn't understand America if you think that people who live in a state like Montana, Washington State, Idaho, um, Minnesota, for that matter, Michigan. Look, look at the distance you drive from Detroit to go up to Mackinac Island or to go to the Upper Peninsula. Look at the distance you drive in, in Arizona or in my home state of Georgia, the largest state east of the Mississippi. The distance from Atlanta to Sea Island or the distance from Albany up to North Georgia to Dalton. I think there are a lot of academic liberals, and Dr. Chu is one of them, who live on a nice campus. They may well bicycle to their lab. Uh, they have no idea how the average American works. And frankly, he is a good case for abolishing the Department of Energy. We've had one since Jimmy Carter created it after the oil shock. Uh, and it doesn't work very well. It has, I think, hurt the entire process of finding energy. With investments like Solyndra, it's open to charges of corruption. I think we'd be much better off to abolish the Department of Energy and create the right rules and the right approaches. Now, let me give you some examples of what I mean by that. Under President Obama, because he's so anti-American energy, we have actually had a 40% reduction 
in development of oil offshore, and we've had a 40% reduction in development of oil on federal lands.